This video is brought to you by Weeble. Use the link down below in the description and Weeble is gonna be giving you two free stocks. Also, if you have not already, make sure you get your four free stocks from signing up with Weeble. Weeble, remember, if you deposit just $100 with this beautiful stock trading platform, you will get yourself two free stocks worth up to $1,600. Are you promoting Weeble because you truly, truly support that platform and because it's your, you think it's the best option out there for viewers? Or are you promoting it because you get a nice affiliate commission? That'd be my question to you. In fact, a better question to ask is if they stopped paying you an affiliate commission, if they no longer paid those nice juicy payoffs that they did, would you still be promoting Weeble as a platform to your viewers? I, I already know the answer to that personally, but let that kind of sink in. Stop. Before you start using Weeble, you should watch this video. Okay, that's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my name is Carlisle. This is Carlisle Speaks Wall Street. I've been working in investment banking for 20 years and I'm also ex-military. I don't say these things to make you think that I'm an expert, but for transparency. This video was not sponsored by any company, completely my own ideas and opinions. But again, if you're thinking about using Weeble, I strongly suggest you watch this video. If you appreciate me, if you appreciate me speaking out and sharing this information with the community, Go ahead and click on the like button and subscribe and smash that bell and welcome aboard. Vigets. Bienvenido. Dobre uto. Buongiorno. For why I am not a fan of Weeble. I'm not a promoter of Weeble. I'm not a supporter of Weeble. And in particular, I'm really not liking what's happening in the YouTube community because if you do watch a lot of YouTube, you are bombarded with creators promoting this platform. And I think this actually is kind of the tip of the iceberg behind a much deeper problem that we're starting to see on this platform. But I want to start. I'm going to explain in deeper detail about the problems that he kind of hinted at there. There's some things that you really need to understand about the content creators that you're watching. Something off just kind of one of the clear topics that I want to cover in today's video. And that is the fact that Weeble, just FYI, does have its ties to China. And there's nothing to say, first of all, that there's anything wrong with that. The fact that they're Chinese owned and their investors happen to be over in China, but it is. I absolutely disagree with that. There are some huge problems with the fact that they are Chinese owned. Um, I think we need to separate any kind of opinions about the Chinese people from opinions about the Chinese government. Just like how we have a lot of corruption in our government, that's a separate thing from we the people, we the people in this country. I mean, we have, we have all stripes, right? We've got all kinds of different people here, but our, our government, that's sort of an organization and there's a lot of corruption within that organization. But again, that is separate from the people. Now, obviously the government is sort of elected by the people and the people in the government are Americans, but there still needs to be made a distinction between the people and the government. So huge problems with the communist party in China, the Chinese people, are all individuals. Issue is the government, not the people. It is something that does catch a lot of people off guard because actually, if you look on their website, for example, and I did a pretty deep dive, you know, you go to their About Us page and there's nothing, you don't see anything about China. There's no uh, reference to that. They have their company name. Most people out there would think that this is an American uh, run company, and it is. They do have operations in America, but if you do actually take a look deeper, Weeble Financial LLC, this is just something that I pulled up and I'll actually give a shout out, first of all, to this lady on YouTube who I'll... Yeah, Natalie, I'm going to be commenting on her video in a second. She also made a video about Weeble and um, I'll talk about that in a bit. But uh, shout out to, of course, uh, Brandon Beavis Investing. He's the one who looked into Weeble, did some pretty good research and found the connections. He's not the only one. Other people have seen it as well, but he's done some pretty good work. So shout out to him. I recommend you go and take a look at his full video. I'm not going to play his full video here. If you want to hear more about his thoughts, the value there is he actually had interactions with Weeble. I have not. I'll also cover this and actually was a, it kind of kicked me, kickstarted me into filming this video, which I wanted to film for a while. But if you take a look at Weeble Financial, you will see that a 75% owner in this company, a direct owner is or an entity with the legal name Fumi Holdings. And Fumi Holdings is indeed a company based out of Hunan, Fujian, China. In fact, if we looked at some of the other backers or investors, 
you do see some other big Chinese capital managers, some asset managers, and I'm not even going to bother to say these names or attempt them. And it's nothing against uh, Chinese investors in the first place. I know a lot of people have opinions on that. Let me just start by clarifying this. There's people that are very much against investing in China because they may have ties with the CCP, the Communist Party. You'll have people come out saying that they are never going to do business with the Chinese because they're up to no good, this or that. And I do think in a sense, that's a fair argument. But at the same time, you guys know me. I own Tencent, which is one of my favorite companies. I own stocks like Alibaba, which is another one of my favorite companies. I have nothing personally against the Chinese, despite all the risks that. Okay, I think he's kind of he's kind of going off track here. Having holding Chinese stocks and opening an account where you provide private information, like maybe a social security number and give access to your bank accounts, um, essentially having a relationship, a financial relationship with a Chinese company is not quite the same thing as buying stocks. Now, technically, when you're buying stocks, you're buying shares of a company. So technically, you do have some level of relationship, but I would more describe it as a passive one. When you buy a stock, you're not giving the company your personal information and access to your bank accounts. You're not installing their product on your machine. It's a huge difference, huge difference. And then again, he gets into the tangent about separating the Chinese people from the, com from the government and the company, um, which I already covered. So I'm not going to say that again. I come with it. I'm well aware of that. Where the difference is between a company like Webull and a company like Tencent or Alibaba is that when I'm buying shares of Alibaba, it's very, very clear to me. There's a lot of transparency that I am buying a Chinese company. Now, don't get me wrong. When it comes, so he makes a big point about the transparency. So the, the the lack of transparency is kind of a red flag. That's not a reason to not do business with them. It's a reason for you to sort of pay attention and be like, what's really going on? And let me investigate. The real problems is when you investigate and find out that they're connected to, to the Chinese companies, which if you understand how communism works, you can imagine the Chinese government is not far away. So what is the problem with the Chinese government? Well... Listen to what Mr. Serpensa has to say, a man who has been living in mainland China for quite a while. I will defend to my dying breath the lovely people and friends I've made throughout mainland China, the common man. But the CCP? Well, the CCP can get bent. The Chinese government are a bunch of sneaky, underhanded, fair-weather friends who are only ever friendly in order to take advantage of you. This corrupt and fierce regime is the exact same regime that is responsible for the mass starvation and calamity of the Chinese people only a few decades ago. I just want to make a key point. Again, this is the Chinese government. Look at the United States. We have people like Matt Gates, who might have done some very bad things to children. He has a right to a trial. And we'll see what happens, but we already have one man, his good friend in jail. We have a lot of evidence of him interacting with some very, very young females, I think 18 years old and perhaps even younger than that. This guy is a representative of the United States in the United States. However, that's one man in our government. You guys that are watching this video, you guys are all individuals. And most of you, I'm sure, don't actually work for the government. So who you are and what, you know, what you're all about, what your morals are, what your values are, they are your own. Our government, however, is a form of organization, an organization that, in my view, is very corrupted. The Communist Party is also corrupt, and I think on a much higher level. Uh, but perhaps that might be my bias of being a citizen here. But um, I, in my view, I think the corruption levels in the Communist Party are much, much worse than what we have here. Um, but again, the same way we can have really disgusting people in our government in the United States. And that is a separate thing from we, the people, the citizens of this country. Now, we do have some blame for putting these people in power and allowing them to stay in power. But that gets into our very divisive media. You have the conservative media echo chamber. You have the liberal media echo chamber. 
both sides are in the dark about something, the media is profiting from dividing them and playing with their emotions. And this, I believe, is a source of a lot of ignorance in this country. Ignorance that leads to people voting for people like this and keeping them in power because everyone only knows about the problems about the other party, right? If you're conservative, you know everything about what's wrong with the Democratic Party. If you're a liberal, you know everything that's wrong with the Republican Party, but neither side is really, really well informed about the people they vote for. And this is due to the media we consume, which has a lot of propaganda, not unlike China. This is the same government that ordered the tanks to roll into Tiananmen Square. The same government that sent death buses around the country to force abortions in the rural areas, often forcing very late term abortions, eight, nine month old pregnant women who would have their labor forcefully induced and the infants drowned after birth. The same government that has no law against animal cruelty and no consideration towards the government and well-being of other nations. China is the least charitable country in the world. This is a disgusting and heartless government. I have witnessed firsthand the destruction of minority culture, the wholesale forced relocation and manhandling of rural Chinese citizens, the utter control over the flow of information by banning any sort of access to news that isn't censored and approved by the CCP, the constant stoking of hatred towards the outside world, all through forced propaganda in schools and in the media. So why should you really care about all of this? And why do I ultimately say you should not be using Weibo in the United States? The relationship between party and private sector companies is up to a point flexible, certainly more so than with state companies. Chinese domestic laws and administrative guidelines, as well as unspoken regulations and internal party committees, make it quite difficult to distinguish between what is private and what is state-owned. In private enterprises and with state-owned firms and every institution in China, the party is the ultimate authority. Here's the problem. Before you consider doing business with Weibo, ask yourself why are these Chinese companies trying to get you to use their software to trade? Why are they so aggressively pushing on these YouTubers who they know they can manipulate with money? Because think about it. If you've got somebody calling you up saying, hey, if you put a link to, and I've gotten these calls too, and I've, I've been like, eh, I don't think so. If you put a link to our product, every time somebody signs up, we're going to give you 200 bucks or whatever it is. They're throwing money around. And to the average YouTuber who's more focused on their own success and their bottom line and their profits, they look at the fancy website and everything looks cool and they look at the money they can make and it's kind of like, ah, whatever. And then they go and make the videos. Hey guys, you should check out this Weeble. Weeble is a great thing and it's a great, you should really check it out. Check it out, right? And then you click on the link and it's just cha-ching, 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 right? Why are they so aggressively pushing their product down the throats of these YouTubers? Now, other companies, many, many companies do this, but it seems that they're doing it in a very aggressive way and a very sneaky way, trying to make the company look like it's a domestic company, trying to perhaps hide the roots. Now, we all, most of us anyway, have many things that are made in China. We buy products that are Chinese products, but we generally know this. It's not a secret. Here we have a company which seems to be making a lot of effort to not really show who they are. Now, this is all speculation. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're up to anything untoward, but it looks bad and it's definitely a red flag. And if you hadn't thought of these things prior, I think you need to reevaluate what you think about Weeble, because these are definitely things, even if you choose to actually use their product, if you have not been aware that they have these links to China, and if you haven't had that thought process of like, wait a minute, what is this really about? Why are they marketing themselves in the way that they are? Then I don't think you're informed enough to be giving them your private information. So I urge you to do that, right? If you decide to use them, that's on you. I'm just saying you should at least think about what you're doing. The other thing is, let's be realistic. If we have 
I guess more like when we have, um, another great world war. China's definitely on the list of countries that'll probably not be our allies. They've been caught doing a lot of spying on us. They send a lot of people over here and do all kinds of sneaky stuff. There were actually Chinese spies that were infiltrating members of our government that actually got involved in romantic relationships. And I mean, <laughs> just, just think about that. This is a country who has been spying on us and infiltrating us. And who, if we go at, you know, ha have another big war, they're probably not going to be our friends. And because of the way their government is set up, the lines between private and government are very much blurred. It would be very easy for the Chinese government to infiltrate these companies and therefore have access to whatever the companies have access to. Are you comfortable with the Chinese Communist Party having access to your private information? Does that make any sense to you? Now, that being said, the product looks great. And I was very disappointed to find out that they had this link because with if they didn't have this link, I probably would be using it. And ironically, one of the reasons for that is because of the effective campaign that they've been placing with these, these YouTubers. Um, I think it was um, uh, Grant Stefan or something like that. Uh, he does a lot of financial videos. He uses it a lot. I saw him using it. And I'm like, that thing looks really cool what he's using. It looks like a really great software. Then I investigated, found out it was Weeble, investigated Weeble and found out the Chinese Communist Party connection. I'm like, oh, man, that was very disappointing for me because, again, I would be using it. I think one thing that we Americans need to consider is that you've got to... <sighs> You can't just bury your head in the sand and not appreciate the dynamics of global relationships and the fact that there are countries out there that would like to see us destroyed. There are countries out there that, again, in the future, we could find ourselves in conflict with. Now, imagine we find ourselves in conflict with the Chinese, with China, and we get a rude awakening. All the technology that we're using that's coming from there if any of that's being used by the military, I'd hope not. But even in the private sector, imagine them shutting down our power grids. Imagine them wiping out your bank accounts. Imagine them shutting down major computer systems all over the country. This is 2021. What you need to understand is that this is a new era in terms of global conflicts and, and war. I think the days of bombs and missiles is kind of fading away I'm not saying bombs and missiles are going away but let's just put it this way there's a lot more new types of weapons quote-unquote weapons in the arsenal of governments around this world cyber warfare is definitely something that we should all be considering very seriously so any kind of links to countries that are very likely to be enemies of America in terms of in the next great war that I hope none of us lives to see. I used to watch um, a show called Battlestar Galactica. And if I recall correctly, I think the enemies were called Cylons. And I think they were sort of AI, sort of artificial intelligence. And somehow there was a link between them and the construction of the warships of the people of Earth. Now, this is a very long time watching this. But long story short, I'll never forget a scene that I saw where the Cylons showed up to attack the humans. They all lined up, ready for battle. And then the enemy flipped a switch, completely shutting down every single human ship. It was like a power switch, just turned them off. Now they're just drifting in space. You can't even get out and run for your life. Your ship is now a coffin. Because you're in space, you got nowhere to go. If you have no power, you can't defend yourself. I think you know what happened next. Form your, own, form your own opinions. But I think it's advantageous when you're trying to figure these things out. Put yourself in the shoes of the potential opponent. If you were the Chinese Communist Party and you see the United States as an enemy or a threat or both, Think about what you would think about 
a great kryptonite of this country, greed. If I were the Chinese Communist Party, I would recognize that one of the greatest weapons against the United States is the exploitation of American greed. We will buy products that we know are potentially being made in sweatshops, which goes against our values and our morality, but we'll turn a blind eye to it all for cheap stuff. So that means as an enemy, that's a great vector for you to infiltrate this country because you know that the American people can't resist. Keep selling them stuff. And who knows, maybe there's certain surprises on those things, things that allow for spying and who knows what else. Then you create this wonderful trading application, which it looks really great and it's free. Americans love free. You think about that for yourself and come up with your own conclusions. But I know personally, if I were the Chinese Communist Party, that's exactly what I would be doing. Keep buying land and buying property and selling you things and getting you more and more dependent. Ooh, sign up for Webull. Oh, it's free. It's a great app. Everyone's using it. Look, all, all these big YouTubers are using it. Get you hooked. And then if anything goes down that we're in a conflict, I would have some really big surprises. A real rude awakening. That's what I would do. And I'm not anywhere near as ruthless as the people who are in the Communist Party. So that's how I'm thinking. What do you think they're thinking? These are not our friends. These are not nice people. And again, we're talking about the government. It just boggles my mind that millions of Americans would feel comfortable openly giving access to their private information and their bank accounts and their funds to people that have ties to the Communist Party. But again, that is our kryptonite. We can't resist. We can't help ourselves. And our enemies know this. I urge you to really think about what you're doing. It's your decision, your money. But make sure that your decision is informed and you're not just focusing on, oh, it's a cool application and it's free and it looks great. If that's how you think, you make yourself an easy target. Don't do that. Find an American company to do business with. That's my advice. That's my opinion. Those are my thoughts. You do what you feel is comfortable for you, but I will not be using Weeble. If somebody comes up with an American equivalent that, that uh, seems as great as the Weeble platform seems to be, um, I'm on board. If you've got a great product and you're an American company, I'm more than happy to promote your product. But Weeble, no. This is Carl Speaks Wall Street. Those are my thoughts. Tell me your thoughts below. Do you use Weeble? What do you think about people who use Weeble? Do you think it's a bad idea? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it matters that there may be links to the Communist Party? Do you feel China is an enemy or a friend? And what do you feel about us supporting companies who potentially use slave, slave labor to produce their products? Thank you for watching. Ciao. Adama.